Well, now, uh, let's start to have a survey of the situation. Uh, let's begin with Robert McKenzie. Well, a recap, first of all, on the swingometer, which has stood up amazingly well, though its arm has been twisted and forced back and forth all through the day and through last night as well. It settled down finally just a fraction over 3%, and this is a, a rough guess at what 3% swing would lead to. Well, it's pretty close to the actual position as we're now getting it. 99, majority for Labour, rather than the 101, which we'd extrapolated from a 3% swing. Quite a far cry from the 4.5% swing, which was the average prediction of the opinion polls, pointing to around 150 Labour lead. We are somewhere there, having had lurches in both directions, uh, continuously, but still half the results settling in right around one point either way from this position. Now, let's look at a cumulative view of the results. Total votes now brought up to date uh, show a picture like this. Uh, 1964, <coughs> Labour had 12.2 million, now 12.9 million. An increase of about 700,000 with a few seats still to come. The Conservatives are down, you'll notice, from 12 to 11.3 something like an 800,000 decline in their total popular vote. The Liberals are also down in total popular vote, although they're going to be slightly up in their seat strength if things go the way they appear to be at the moment. Now, the same figures put a different way, of course, are share of vote. Here's the way the party shared out in proportion the vote that they got in the last election in this one. Labour up about an even 4% on the figures we've got so far. The Conservatives down a fraction over 1%. Uh, liberals um, losing a proportion of the vote, but still, as I say, perhaps coming back slightly stronger in the House. And a very important consideration, the turnout down from 77 to something like 75.8. This is the lowest turnout in 20 years, to some extent appearing to justify either the view that the public found the campaign boring, or it had already made up its mind and thought the opinion polls had predetermined the result. Uh, we're still going to be arguing about why the turnout was so low, and was it because the opinion polls were telling everybody that it was a foregone conclusion? And the differential abstentions of one side or another, Conservative or Labour, may be a very important point to discuss later on. Finally, let me just remind you of the way our post-war history now looks in terms of elections, looking at this chart on the majority since 90, 1945. The big Labour win uh, in 1945, then the tiny majority, which lasted, in fact, only some uh, 15 months here, then the steady comeback of the Conservatives from 17 majority, 57, 100 majority by 59. The only time in, the, in a century in which one party has gained strength in three successive elections. Now Labour, for the first time in its history, has gained strength in two successive elections. They've gone from a four-seat lead at the last election to something like a hundred-seat lead this time. The first time in Labour's history they've increased their strength in two elections running. And, of course, the question mark should now be moved over there to ask what happens in the election of 1970 or 71. That was Robert McKenzie.